Welcome to our parent information video. My name is Maura. And I'm Joe. This video is offered to you by the East County SELPA in collaboration with the Exceptional Family Resource Center. For parents. By parents. And here are seven fast facts to know about how your child becomes eligible to receive special education services. Number one, the only way to receive special education services is for your child to be evaluated by the school. Whether your child already has a diagnosis from a doctor or not, the school is legally required to conduct its own educational assessment. The school will want to know about and consider any prior assessments of the child. Number two, there are three ways that your child can be referred for assessment. If your child received California Early Start Services, then your child must be assessed by their local school district no later than their third birthday. Schools are also required to identify and assess children who have a suspected disability. This is called child find. Once a child enrolls in public schools, a teacher or other staff member may refer a child for an evaluation. Parents can also request special education assessments directly from their local public school. Number three, here's how to know your child receives an appropriate assessment. You gave consent for the assessment plan. All testing is valid and non-discriminatory. Your child is assessed using their dominant language or mode of communication. Assessors are appropriately qualified. All areas of suspected disability are included. A variety of assessments are utilized that may include assessors' observations of your child, interviews with you and teachers, standardized and informal testing, and a review of any available records. Number four. Your child's first IEP meeting will be held to review the assessment reports. You can ask to receive a draft copy of the report ahead of your child's meeting. Maura and I find that it helps families to meaningfully participate in the meeting. At the meeting, you should feel comfortable asking questions so that you can understand the evaluation report and better understand your child's needs. Number five, determining eligibility is a team effort. For a child to be found eligible for special education services and supports, the IEP team, which includes you, the parent, must answer yes to each of the following questions. Number one, does the student meet the criteria for at least one of the federal disability categories recognized in California? Two, does the disability adversely affect the student's educational performance? And three, does the student require specially designed instruction to access education? For a closer look at each of these complex questions, scan the QR code that will be at the end of this video. Number six, even if your child is not eligible for special education right now, the assessment process can be a starting point to consider other sources of help. For example, the IEP team might recommend that a 504 plan be developed to provide accommodations at school. Remember, your child does not need an IEP or a 504 plan to receive extra supports for behavior, for learning or for mental health. Lastly, you can always reach out to EFRC to explore what else is available in our communities. Number seven, even if the team finds your child eligible, they are not automatically placed into special education. If this is your child's first assessment, then you will need to consent to the IEP before your child would receive special education services and supports. We hope you'll check out our other video, Five Things to Know About Special Education, if you are making this decision soon. EFRC and the East County SELPA are standing by to help answer any questions you have about this video or any special education topic. Don't forget to like and follow us on social media and you'll definitely want to scan the QR code to access more resources about eligibility with ADR. Empowering, empowering families, families to empower, empower students. students.